Hello and welcome to the Story Pilgrim, Dolan Creative Retreat. With the breathtaking backdrop of the Redopi Mountains, and yes, I will pronounce that incorrectly, but just the once, the summer script writing base took place, and I immersed myself with inspiring conversations, learned from some motivated mentors, and am humbled by the Bulgarian hospitality. Bulgaria currently is marked politically by a period of instability and transformation. It has its challenges, as we all do at the moment, but the creatives on this retreat had a great sense of hope, optimism and strength. Make sure you are following the podcast to stay updated on more inspiring journeys and creative insights. Back to Dolan and the Redopi Mountains. Let's explore. I am sat on a rock at a place called the Sanctuary, just outside of Dolan in Bulgaria. And I believe they are called the Rwandan Mountains. I'm surrounded by pine trees. There are huge outcrops of granite here. There are valleys. I'm sat on an outcrop which drops down probably about 50 feet. But there are pine trees going up past me. I'm actually sat underneath an oak tree at this this point. I'm on this retreat for storytelling. Storytelling, or the actual title is Storytellers of the Future. And we've got people from all over the world doing all sorts of different jobs. Just learning about what what is what is your role within this life as an artist, as a game designer, as a software developer, as a trainer. We've just been invited to just have what that feeling of hope is. What, what, how does it feel to be full of hope? And what would that mean to apply to your art or whatever it is that you do? And an action uh, that goes along with that. And for some reason I can't get my mind away from just holding my breath. kind of isn't hopeful is it because if I if I just hold my breath and I continue to hold my breath there's some problems going to happen and we were asked to um, envisage close your eyes and envisage a piece of theatre or art that you might see in three years time that that encapsulates the hope that you have for the world and whatever that might be and I kept seeing things and then it'd just go away. And then I'd see something else and then it would just go away. And I can't focus in on one thing. And uh, Daniel, who's leading the workshop, um, just said, just concentrate on the feeling. It's a really cool place to be able to do that. And I constantly talk about in my podcasts about nature and that connection to nature and the connection to myself and how much hope you do get from being in an environment like this. But as I do that, it's like, I guess the holding of the breath is probably me wanting to hold on to this moment. But also, I think start to think is that why do why do you would have to come to Bulgaria and sit in the middle of a pine forest for that? The mornings here in Dolan are well, the major I say the majority that I have experienced are extremely crisp, fresh, clear. 
is kind of like every night the the slate gets wiped clean and you wake up to a completely new day of possibilities and um, realms is the word that I want to use I know that's like that's the same anywhere but it's obviously for me the moment of that I'm in with regards to this learning experience it's also somewhere new this isn't mundane to me in any way because it's you know fresh and new um, morning how are you I am I'm, I'm still waking up but I'm good <laughs> I'm getting there did you sleep okay yes but yeah too good trunk <laughs> nice good I'll see you in a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was Maria from Finland. She's a theatre director and teacher. She's absolutely lovely. She's been here several times. But yeah, it just, uh, you know, that sense of place and environment and... Some people prefer to just keep it the same, stay in the same place, stay in the same environment and uh, don't mix it up. Uh, I'm afraid I do like to mix it up, but that's, that's just my own sensibilities. We are digging down deep, quickly and rightly so. Dolan has a mystical, timeless sense to it. In Dolan, there is a house that in the back garden they have a little amphitheatre that they have built and it's a place where they have summer festivals. The, the guy that owns that house is a musician and we've walked out and there's a, another little stage but it's very elfish in its way. It looks like it's made out of wood. Uh, and has very curvy curves to it um, and apparently they held summer festivals here uh, of music and of plays so people will come up to the mountains and uh, make the most of it it's interesting isn't it you come and you're miles away and then you get somebody coming past on a motorbike and totally takes you out of the world that you're in and throws you back or gives hints back to the life or another life or the modern life in which we have. And that's somebody just, uh, just out for fun. As we crossed the stream there, there was hundreds of tiny little blue butterflies just flickering, flittering across the surface and across the very luscious plants that were right by the stream. It's a sight that uh, I've very rarely seen in my lifetime. It's just a delight to sit and watch in a way of uh, peacefulness, but also by them fluttering around. There's hundreds of them, kind of chaotic as well in a way. And uh, they move so fast. As well as another one, well, there's one individual one, a much bigger black and white butterfly there is just resting on there. Uh, the thorns next to me and what is their perspective you know very much different um, time 
that they have. I mean, they don't think like that, though, do they? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we didn't have that? You know, all these thoughts and desires that we have, and you know, it's simply you are a creation, you're part of the environment, and uh, you eat, you reproduce, and then you move on. Can we live our lives like that? There's a lot of uh, juniper, juniper bushes around here and all I can think of is uh, Life of Brian. Stop eating my juniper berries. Those are my juniper bushes. Look, the Lord has provided. Um, take a lot from that. It's absolutely beautiful. We walked up and we can see we're like on the next ridge across from Dolan. So we can look across and you can see the village kind of just nestled on top. And I'm not a, I mean, my head's in the gaming mode because of this conference, but I'm not a gamer, but I have sort of uh, played some civilization games and stuff. You know, when you like build a house, it's sort of like either pops up from the ground or it, it drops in from the sky. I can imagine these houses just being dropped from a great height and they've just kind of landed on the, uh, the the spur of the mountain across from us and you expect it's kind of expect another one just to drop in at any moment the cross is down there I see the cross that's a bit Huh? That's a bit like stealing our scene. No, there's no like the cross like this. Yeah, like and then oh, yeah. yeah. No, it's just like just I'm over here. Yeah. I'm here. Huh? Just got back from our little walk to the cross and back. I was talking to Mike, who's from Finland, who is an author, game designer, screenwriter. He was talking about a project that he made back in 2007, or helped to make, where I think it was entitled Where is Marika? And it was uh, this best friend of this lady, Marika says that she's just disappeared and it was a five part series on TV but it also incorporated a online presence and also a physical presence around Sweden that people would go and find clues as to where she's been taken and the TV TV channel got involved with it and they were like denying it all and saying that they weren't involved and it was done as as a drama series, but many people thought that it was absolutely real. Um, it's really interesting talking about how we can bring the aspect of game into an artist's work, whether that is a piece of art or a writing project or a piece of theatre or even a podcast. I think this is going to plant the seed for an episode. Uh, later on down the line. Butterflies, juniper bushes, conifers and elfish stages. We really were being treated, inspired by nature and the mentors such as Mike. One of my fellow storytellers is Adam from Wales, but now lives in Nice, France. We went for a walk. Yeah, I did. It was um, I ended this whole this whole trip being out in such a rural place. Like Christian was saying, it it's a connection to my childhood. Yeah. Um, 
but it's, it's been it's been a bit of a soothing soothing balm for the soul I didn't know I needed okay nice yeah but, you know I've, I've gone back to the countryside for a weekend at a time or visiting family but that makes demands on your time yeah but here yeah, it's been very immersed in yeah it. it's like the sheer amount of insects that slight good sense of isolation mm -hmm. and that was particularly felt at that sanctuary because like, one, one of the things that always helps center me makes me feel good for whatever reason is being up somewhere high okay yeah why do you think that is <sighs> I'm not quite sure really um I have theories uh-huh like there's it's definitely not a um, look upon me, ye minor, and despair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's more of a yeah, I am so small, sure, sort yeah. of thing. And this world is so big. Yeah. And the the effect isn't really exaggerated or diminished if I have company. Okay. It's just that act of having gone for a bit of physical activity ascended then you get rewarded with a beautiful view yeah. or at least an interesting view yeah your adrenaline spike is sort of going down yeah your heart comes down you feel a sense of accomplishment sure and again there's that feeling the small part mm -hmm. it's um i had this opinion or I think philosophy might be too grand a title, but you know, we are we are our brains mm -hmm. and our souls and these weird little flesh machines. Yep. And we're all as far as we are aware, mm. inhabiting the same world. But yes. we're all interpreting it differently. Totally. And because of that we are inherently at the centre of our own universes. Of our own yeah, exactly. Um yeah. and like being on top of a hill and seeing so much of the world around you is in some ways quite a good way of uncentering or coming sure. out of yourself. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, yeah, you get that different perspective. Yeah. It's, it's something... It's not like, oh, there's a wonderful word for it. Where, you know, we're talking about airports if you spend time in an airport you're seeing all these people coming and going again in the center of their own little universes with yep. their own little concerns sure yep um yeah and you wonder what their lives are like and what's on their mind and how late are they you see people meeting other people yeah. for like the first time in however many years this may be been imagine yeah. these little nuggets of what's going on in their own life yeah and I think there's a term coined for that, which I believe is to sonder, like wonder oh. with an S. Okay. I don't think we're going to get very far with that one. Um. You can always... Mm. I just love all these butterflies. It's incredible. I've not seen this much... But just in this... Life. Time. Yeah. <laughs> They're just doing their thing, aren't they? In such a long time. Yeah. And then it's just not one species as well, is it? No, There's it's like loads of them. Everything. It's come up in conversation with a few people, but you know, like not even 10, 20 years ago, you, you'd be driving along at night, you get out of the car, and the front of the car would be plastered with insects. Yeah. No matter yeah. where you were, even yeah. in the city. Yeah. But now. Yeah, exactly. Nothing. And it's yeah. not really something you notice until you remember. Yeah. And then it's a bit. That cricket. Boing. Right. Yeah. Tells you of a certain amount of dread. Well, the cricket, or, or the, <laughs> lack, the lack of insects. Yeah, the lack of insects. Yeah. You know, most people don't particularly care, them, but they're a fundamental and foundational part of yeah, chains oh, huge. and biodiversity. Well, is it? I think I read somewhere or heard somewhere it's down to us getting rid of the hedgerows. Like getting rid of the hedgerows and putting up walls and certainly doesn't help. 
I don't think we're going to get anything here, do you? I think this is going to just well, stop. I, we drop down. I have a slight vibe. I feel like there might be something, but there also may well not. There's but something that, up there. What's there on the trees intrigues me. Yeah, let's go and have a look. We may need to drop down a bit. Could just be a cow. <laughs> well, do Let's start back out. I've hey? heard so much of them. Well, yeah, but well, I didn't. What, what day was it? Was it Tuesday? No, Wednesday. When I went down to the school, um, I heard all the bells. Of the ding, ding, you know those bells. Yeah. And it was sheep. <laughs> it was all. It was their flock of sheep. Well, there is something up here. There's a little oh, structure. I was told there's a shrine somewhere on this side of the river. Okay. I'm not sure if this is it. <coughs> this might be something to do with that festival. Do we know what that festival is? Uh, Dimitar said it was called Transformations. Oh. But did not elaborate further. Was it a one-off or is it an annual Every two event? years, I believe. Every two years. Okay. Because that little stagey area is really cool. Yeah. Some sort of pot. Okay, oh, okay. Hut and little water feature. Okay. We do have burning things, don't we? Yeah, a little fire. Hey, Lizzie. Where? Oh, yeah. That was quite a big one. A hut with table and chairs, and what do you reckon that is on the wall? Is uh, that like a griddle? Yeah, that's a barbecue. Barbecue griddle. Yeah. Oh. For do you doing... have barbecued bananas? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so there's the fire. Nice piece of I love this stuff. granite. It is, isn't it? That sparkling. Ooh. Nearly. Itself it does, doesn't it? It's just like glistening. That water was extremely clear and very cold. Didn't know where we were heading, whether we were actually on a path or not. We just ploughed on, enjoying the scenery, adventure and each other's company. Something that always makes my soul a bit happier when I go back is seeing that lush, hyper-aggressive green yeah. of Wales. Yeah. You still have family there? Uh, yeah, my, my mother. She lives um, in a tiny village. If you were to stick a pin in the middle of Wales on the map, you wouldn't be too far off. It's very much there. Is she, is she still working? Is she retired? Or? No, she, um, she's had uh, chronic mental health problems. Oh, wow, uh, okay. So, uh, certainly most of my life. Right. But you know, she's uh, had a lifetime of gathering tools and a support network and <coughs> finding her own way of Happy being. Yeah, yeah. She lives. Is she on her own? She is. Well, yeah. depends if you count the dogs or not. Yeah, yeah. Your farm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Is that a different house to the one you grew up in? It is. Okay. The, um, where I grew up, it was. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Again, in a very similar area in the middle of Wales. There's a place called the Elan Valley. England, yeah, yeah. Which is where there's a few major reservoirs which supply water to Birmingham. And they're fantastic structures. You know, the, the running joke of, we used to build things. Yeah. Or well, the Victorians got things done and then we haven't done anything since. Yeah. Like, they're, they are a particularly good testament of that. Sure, yeah. They are incredible structures. Yeah. And beautiful. Yeah for something that so fundamentally so, shapes the landscape. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and 
to tell the tale, as it were. My father was an almost yuppie. Okay. Like he owned a big terrace house in a particularly desirable part of Bristol. Right. Okay. Oh. He had okay. a job in some sort of burgeoning tech industry. Yep. You know, back when computers were just starting to be just coming in less than the size of a small room. Yeah. Um, and I think like most of us, he went through that crisis of not wanting a nine to five job. Yep. Not wanting a grind. Yep. Wanting a challenge, wanting to do something stupid. Yeah. So he moved to Mid Wales, sold his house obviously. Yeah. Um, and leased a thoroughly dilapidated house from the estate managers of the Yeland Valley. Oh, okay. Like it was basically a shell. Yeah, yeah. A very big shell, a very nice shell. Yeah. But a shell nonetheless. Yeah. Um, we spent a good nine months trying to do it up. Right. Pulling out sheep carcasses from the, mm. the old kitchen, stuff like that. Wow. Uh, finally got it to a habitable state, turned it into a T&B. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, this is weird, isn't it? Like, isn't it? We kind of like... There's these sections where there's just nothing in there, and then you're like, oh no, it's over there. Take a guess. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was ever profitable. No? I think he was eating into his money reserves from selling the house. Yeah. But he adored it. Well, so how do you put something that, like that on the map? You know, it's like... Before, I mean, now you've got yeah. social media and stuff. And that, I mean, he... Well, I gather, and from what I remember, he did good trade, uh -huh. but just not enough. Right. Or rather, just enough to keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, barely a few years in, he met my mum. They had me. Yep. Um, and I think the thing he, he views as the most worthwhile part of the entire endeavour is that he got to be around whilst I was growing up. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather yeah than he the... quite literally worked from home. Yeah. I yeah. Would get involved and I'd welcome guests. Yeah. And I had a little red fleece waistcoat that I was very proud of. I okay. Had strange aspirations to become a butler for a while. All right. Really? <laughs> so much life. It really is, isn't there? I wonder what the, you know, like. I've heard rumours of bears, but there must be deer. Surely. Up here. And we've got bears, we've got wolves. Wolves? Supposedly. Really? And okay. I'm sure they're sensible enough to avoid people. But yeah. Yeah, they must be prey animals. Making this in like lynx. Did you get lynx? Yeah. Oh. Um, what is it? Eurasian link? Eurasian, yeah. Badgers. Eurasian. Oh, right. I find badgers inherently funny. <laughs> Is it the, the stripes? They've got, they've got that sort of slightly disgruntled air. Yeah, they do, yeah. That's the snout, then, yeah. Mm. Yeah, they're always kind of like... <laughs> Although they do play, don't they? they they're they quite do. playful. Uh, there was a wonderful viral video that came out about a year ago and still does the rounds of a badger and a fox captured oh, on night camera. I don't think I've night, seen that. Uh, they formed a little party. Oh really? Mm. The fox, it, the camera's facing like um, a sewage outlet or something or an overflow pipe. Uh -huh. And the fox bounds into view goes to the entrance of the pipe, sort of hops on the spot excitedly, looking off camera. Yeah. And then this badger shuffles onto frame and starts following the fox down the pipe. Re oh, really? It's so sweet. So it's like, it's excited to kind of like show it yeah. what it's found or something. There's, there's something really wonderful about um, interspecies relationships in animals. Yeah. 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 You see in banal forms of like 
friendly cats and dogs in homes, but yeah. in the wild it takes on a whole new dimension. Yeah, no, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, because we associate that, like you said, in the home, or and then you stick it into the wild, with two completely different. I wonder if, I wonder how, you know, we see that, you know, oh, there's that one interaction. I wonder how common it is. Why did we leave this tub the last day? That's what you do, isn't it? Yeah. Like okay. It. I'm not yeah. sure if it's people in general or certain personality types, but you need deadlines. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It forces you to either do or do not. Yeah. yeah. There's also distinctly that feeling yesterday and even more today where it's not that we're all che we're not all checked out per se. Yeah, yeah. But we're all very relaxed. The yeah. structure has come loose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was also nice not getting frustrated with that. Yeah. Because in the past I could be like, oh, come on. You know, and there wasn't a little element of that. But the majority is like, okay, if that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Hey, on, on Monday or Tuesday? No, we started earlier, didn't we? Sunday or Monday. Yeah, yeah. I would have been so mortified and yeah. ashamed yeah. if I'd overslept by an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. For a yeah. workshop. But then... Like, to the point where... I'm sure there's a word for that particular neurological response, but... Say, like, there's an email you've been meaning to reply to. Yeah. And you haven't. And you haven't, yeah. And then it becomes a, a beating heart in the wall. Yes. And you keep putting off and putting off and putting off and then you just can't face it anymore. Yeah. Right, to the point of not coming to the workshop at all. Yeah, exactly. And like... Uh, but... But there is always a but, isn't there? I enjoyed Adam's description of a badger having a slightly disgruntled air. The week we were experiencing really did defy time. We covered so many topics, and we were on our way back when... And then it... I remember, like, various trips to Snowdonia with my dad. We'd pull up on a lay-by or something for a refresher. And I'd zip up the nearest squeeze slope. Yeah. Like a goat. And then... They wouldn't... Oh! You okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they wouldn't notice. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that one go. That's, is it going to stop? It will, at some point. We get back and Dolan is Still destroyed. <laughs> Where's Dolan gone? Well, this, this rock just came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, disappear up in like a goat. Yeah, they yeah. wouldn't notice because I wouldn't have the presence of mind to tell them. Tell them. And then complain down it. hear them screaming my name. <laughs> Adam. Get down, you stupid bastard. What are you doing? Yeah. And, of course, the only sensible thing to do at that juncture is to slide down. Yeah, exactly. As fast as you can. Yeah. Causing as much destruction and chaos. Yeah. Sending pieces of slate flying at the car. Flying around, yeah. How do you feel about these little signs that are put up for the people that have passed on? Oh, I think that ties into my general feeling about this village. In that it's... It's beautiful and mm -hmm. sad mm -hmm. and kind of, the word I keep reaching for is hollow. Yeah. I don't mean it in, you know, no, not you in hear it. hollow and you think of someone who just doesn't feel anything. Yeah. But it is literally hollowed out. Yes. So many yeah, exactly. Into shells. The meat's been taken away kind of thing. And that's partly the physical nature of it and yeah. partly the population. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, it has, hasn't it? That's a very good word to use. Let's come to a conversation. You know, there, there are other villages like this with similar architecture, and they are architectural preserves, yeah. like here. But they have managed to capitalise on it mm -hmm. and create mm -hmm. a degree of industry around it. But here, 
They have not. They have not, have they? But then, yeah. if they had, would we be here? Would we have this exactly free, we free space to do what we're doing? Exactly. Would there be this art collective here? And I, I get yeah. to understand that a lot of the residents are involved in the art scene, which is sort of why this event happens here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a very valid, again, good valid point. Just trying to think where we were, where we are now. We kind of went in that area, didn't we? We went up, up there. That, that yeah. Way. Okay. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Summer Scriptwriting Base. Thank you, Dolan and the stunning Rodopi Mountains. I'm struck by how this village, with its quiet charm, became a fertile ground for reflection and creativity. This week of immersion in storytelling for the future allowed me to learn from diverse voices and disciplines, proving that inspiration often comes from unexpected places. Engaging with passionate individuals outside my usual field enriched my perspective, demonstrating that the intersection of different arts and ideas can profoundly shape and inspire our own work. Dolan's tranquil emptiness has left me with a renewed sense of possibility and a deeper appreciation for the creative process. The Story Pilgrim was written, walked, talked, directed, recorded, produced by me, Darren Hill. Anya Backer provided the amazing music on Sean the Harp. For more information on Anya and myself, search The Story Pilgrim on all of your socials, and please make sure you are following this podcast. Until the next time, keep listening, and buen camino.